Did you ever find yourself in a situation where you really wanted a job and then the moment you get it, you start asking yourself, am I really passionate about this job? Do I really like this job? If you watched my previous video, you know how eager I was about being a consultant because this job had all the passions that I thought I had. For example, traveling, having creative work and having awesome high class colleagues. I thought I hit the jackpot because I found a job with all my pre-existing passions. That's what I thought. However, during the year, I found myself unmotivated, sad and unfulfilled when the day-to-day -day work had nothing to do with the passions I just listed. So I asked myself, what should I do to have a fulfilling career if following my passion isn't the key to happiness? So in this video, we'll analyze why passion is the last thing you should follow and what to do to ensure you find the right job for you by using the best-selling book, So Good They Can't Ignore You by Cole Newport. So if you're interested, keep on watching. First, let's state a fact. People with pre-existing career passions are rare. Psychologist Robert Valorant questioned 539 Canadian university students to find out if they had any passions and if so, what were they? 84% of students said they had a passion. And you know what they were? The majority said dance, hockey, skiing, reading and swimming. Those are all hobby style passions. The most popular answers given had nothing to do with work. In fact, less than 4% of all answers registered had any relation to careers or education. So how can you possibly follow a passion at work if you don't have any work-related passion in the first place? Therefore, it's dangerous to follow your passion because it doesn't really exist. And we'll see an example in a bit of what can happen to you if you do follow your passion without thinking further about your career path. Lisa Furrer, at age 38, quit her job in advertising and marketing to pursue her passion, yoga. She bought a 200-hour yoga instruction course with a home equity loan costing $4,000. After finishing the course, she opened her own yoga gym targeting children and pregnant women. Unfortunately, when the recession hit in 2008, her business struggled to a point where she made around $50,000 a year. She ended up buying her food in food stamps, as the New York Times mentioned. So that's a clear example of how following your passion out of the blue without a clear strategy can backfire pretty quickly. But wait a minute, we have tons of examples of people quitting their job and becoming millionaires by starting their own business or uh, by starting their own startups. So what's the difference between them and Lisa Furrer? Firstly, it's their mindset. Lisa had what Cole Newport calls the passion mindset. And this mindset says that Every time you get a job, you ask yourself, what does this job bring me? The problem with this mindset is you become super selfish. Cole Newport says in the book, you become hyper aware of what you don't like about a job, leading to chronic unhappiness. And this is especially true for entry level positions, which by definition are not going to be filled with challenging projects and autonomy. These come later. I'll let that sink in for a second because that line hit me pretty hard when I read it the first time. Because like Lisa, I think I had the passion mindset before and that's why I found myself unmotivated or unfulfilled at work from time to time. So what mindset should you adopt? How should you think about your job? Cole Newport says that you should adopt the craftsman mindset and this focuses on what you can bring to the job. So this mindset frees you up from the burden of always asking yourself, Am I, do I really like this task? Am I really passionate about this job? And gives you clarity. So just focus on your skills and focus on uh, giving your best at work. Like Newport likes to say, working right trumps finding the right work. Therefore, if you focus on your skills and doing your best at work, you will develop rare and valuable skills that we are going to call career capital. You know, I'm talking about that kind of skill that makes you indispensable at work. That kind of skills that make your resume shine and that make other people say, damn. For example, mastering the basics of Excel isn't impressive, but knowing how to use the 300 plus Excel formulas to enhance your company's business processes is. So you might ask right now, okay, I will focus on my skills, but how can focusing on my skills bring me to a fulfilled career? And for that, we're gonna talk about the career capital theory. According to Carl Newport, three traits make a job desirable. Number one, creativity, having the freedom to create whatever you want. Number two, impact, 
you feel like your work contributes to a great cause. And number three, control. You decide when to wake up, you don't have a boss micromanaging you, and you set your own hours. The thing is, you need enough career capital or skills to buy these traits, or else it's impossible. I like to think of this situation like this. Imagine skills are like money. With that money, you can buy traits that make a job desirable. You gain money through hard practice and time. If you don't earn or, or save enough money, you'll never be able to buy these traits. Think about it for a second. What happens when you get better at your job? Well, you get promoted, you have more freedom, your salary goes up, and you have more control over your actions. Some people become self-employed, start their own businesses once they have enough skills and enough comprehension of their industry. So right now, let's take a counter example from Lisa's example and show you how career capital happens in real life. So what happens if you focus on your skills instead of your passion? What's funny is two days after Lisa's article talking about food stamps, another article came up on the New York Times. But this time, it was talking about another marketing executive named Joe Duffy. They had a similar background, so he also worked in advertising and started to get tired of the corporate life. But Duffy is an artist in his free time, so some people may have guessed that he quit his job to be an artist full-time and follow his passion, but he didn't. Actually, Duffy had the craftsman mindset, so he ignored all the constraints the corporate life uh, was giving him, like having a boss, waking up every morning super early to go to work, and he focused on honing his skills to buy the traits that he wanted in his dream job. So he specialized in international logos and brand icons. And as he became better, he was hired in a new company where he could manage his own department. So you see, by honing his skills and gathering enough career capital, he bought a little bit of control, the third trait that we talked about. If you meet Duffy today and ask him about his career, he will tell you that he loves it. And that's the main argument Cole Newport is trying to make in his book. He says, stop looking for your passion. Just focus on your craft and on your skills, and then the passion will follow. Famous TED Talk speaker Daniel Pink and author of the book Drive also found in a research that passion follows mastery. In other words, you become passionate about something only after you get the sense of accomplishment that comes from being good at it. Therefore, the only thing that you should focus on right now to have a fulfilling career is be so good they can't ignore you. But if you're looking for a job right now, through your online research, try to look for the main skills the, the job that you're interested in demands, and then hone those specific skills. And that's the main argument I had in my previous videos when I told you that you should invest in your personal development through websites like Skillshare or Udemy and learn the skills that you will need in your future job. And in that case, companies will not hesitate to hire you. So, what did we learn today? Passion is rare. Not a lot of people have pre-existing career passion inside them, so following your passion can be a mistake. Therefore, you should follow skills mastery. In other words, become good at your craft to get the traits that make a job desirable. You can successfully become good if you change your mindset from always asking yourself, what does this job bring me to what can I offer the job? And by the way, this video is just a small summary from the book. I actually summarize around 50 pages in 230, so definitely if you enjoy the video, you should read the whole book. It will blow your mind. I'll put a link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and tell me in the comment section below, do you agree with Cole Newport? And if so, uh, what kind of skills are you going to focus on right now? Don't forget to subscribe so that you won't miss any future videos like this one. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Ciao.